where you get your water temperature information, like Roth's report. Or so Roth's is really good. Um, Hilton's is, is what I use. He sponsors my tournament. So I mean like temperature and then like having structure like live, some type of live bottom and bait there. Um, is there a depth correlation that call them too deep or no, so shallow? Or? I wouldn't be afraid to start at 120 feet. I mean, especially if you're high speed and you'd be the ledge in less than an hour, you know? I ring a lot of ground, but I could see where you're saying like you pick your honey hole, but then have like a backup plan. Yeah. So you're not just aimlessly going in there, at least having some direction to go do and, and to add on that um, th sometimes that bite will shut off on those numbers because I you know if you're not fishing a big area even on the ledge the banks here you know it could be hot on the south end and then it'll it, Wahoo will shut off and I'll, I want to be prepared to leave that area and go check those other spots and <coughs> find something else that might be productive when that next bite and you know the next time I think the bite's going to go on that day so you mentioned like the three moon phases. Is there like three days before, two days after? Is there as far as the moon goes, I love fishing leading up to the full moon. And I like fishing on the full moon. Now the full moon, fishing on the full moon is tough. You're gonna get a, maybe a shot at early morning bite, um, but it's gonna be an afternoon bite. And you gotta be willing to stay out there. So we might go in and like dive into the tackle. Um, hey, somebody's never high speed fish before like how do you act, how are you gonna rig it like I've got my rod yeah. real like what am I gonna do with this thing? yeah so man pick the colors you got confidence in obviously the colors you <coughs> caught colors in you don't have to go crazy but you know he's got the perfect he's got the perfect colors out here your basics black and orange has always been a, traditionally a great color your bonita colors um, fantastic lures for here pick this where it's whatever it is 96 ounces or whatever it is um, you know, are you always using a weight? When I got my spread going, you know, he's got a great selection of weights here um, with the trolling lid. I always go heaviest, closest, and work my way out. I try and do a different lead on each rod. You guys can play with that. Um, that's just how I do it. I don't think that's set in stone or anything. I think when I've talked to other captains about it, it all the the, the thing that uh, correlates is. The heavier weights are always closer to the boat. And you got a, um, a 64 ounce lead, <coughs> and you got it close to the boat. How deep do you think that really is down? Good target, you think? Five, ten feet down? Five I don't think. Feet down? I don't think you got to be thinking a depth target. I think you got to be thinking of getting your lines in the clear water. Right. So if you're down a foot or two below your white wash, that's good, right? Mm -hmm. And closer to the boat. It's the more, you know what I'm saying, once you get past a little V, there's a lot of whitewash in there, so that 64 keeps that lure down underneath that. Right. I think that's what you got to think about more than I need to be at 50 feet, because, right. you know, planer fishing, we can talk about that in a little bit, that's going to be where you're going to do some depth control fishing. Hey Mark, your, your, your rods that you're pulling these lures on, what's the smallest reel in, in town, Bono, that you're using? I'm using 50 rods. I use 130 pound um, diamond polygor. In your braid, your snap so you double line it. So I do a, I do the bimini twist. Um, I don't do a big one because I tie it on the boat sometimes, not often, but I do one about this tall. And then you can either do a cat's paw or an old style fisherman knot, but then they both work very well. I do like a double line. I think it definitely like reiterates the fact you have to use a shock leader because you have no no strength yes. whatsoever in your braid. Absolutely. Yeah. Once I get that set up, or you know, I get my lure set up, got my shock leader. Diamond makes a great shock leader. You know, you go from your trolling lead, we'll hook to your your swivel on your line, um, run your shock leader, we'll let it lure, and then hook your lure up. And I think these are about 25 feet. And that's the deal. Um, <clears throat> those look pretty simple. So when it you're is, so you know when you when you when you're coming from bay fishing, it is. Simple. <laughs> I'm not rigging a hundred values the night before. You know, do I bring them? Yeah, do I fish them? But it it's simple. And there's a lot of criticism for that, but you can't argue the results. You got to be careful with braid to some degree. One, like handling the braid. You obviously yeah. try not to, but braid can cut into itself as well. So you want to make sure experts put that braid on there. <laughs>
the other thing we talked about, um, Bill and I were talking about drags. You want a reel with a really good drag system on it. You know, just not to spin off, but with the drag, I do set mine at 28 pounds. Um, and I, I check it every time I go because I want to make sure that's, that's 28 on strike or full? On strike. On strike. So, and I do it. So it still have a face left? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, man. And, and, and you, you know, you're putting them in the rod holder and fighting them, or you putting a stand up belt on? I leave it in the rod holder. No. Yeah. They're all bent butt, I'm sure. I do. On my, on my high speed, it's all bent butts, yeah. Like, no matter where the rod is, you leave it in that rod holder until you get it closer to the boat. But once you get the fish, you know, to the boat, I leave, I leave the trolling bed about six inches from the rod tip. <coughs> my guy will pick up the rod and he'll start walking towards the front. And it helps if you have rod holders on the bow. If you don't, you just go have to have them stand there and hold it. Uh, you got your wire man starting back in the corner. You know, these are what, 25, 30 foot a leader. So you got a long leader to deal with. And so you start easing that fish up, easing that fish up, and he's walking up. But he's always got to be ready to come back because the thing about a Wahoo man, they'll go right for the motors, or they'll try to get to the other side of the boat. So your your wire man's got to be ready to make a move, especially on outboard boats, to get to the other side. Very tricky um, with a with a spunky Wahoo. Um, if everything goes right, he'll lead you know he'll, he'll lead it on up. He's going to have to curl a couple of pieces, and then I'll slide in behind him once the fish lays up on the corner, and I'll stick him, pull him over the rail. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Okay. When you're picking a spot, you say you're looking for structure and stuff, and you fish over live bottom, some of your numbers are on top of spots like that. You think that's what's attracting the fish? I definitely think bottom fishing numbers and wahoo correlate. I think the term has kind of helped expose the fishery we have here, and it's good. I mean, I, I can't say that I fished offshore a ton, but like I do not remember a more consistent like where it's been like not you know seeing 80 and 90 pound fish and above. Um.